Live from the studios of NBC 12 and ABC 25, this is First Coast News at 11. And we are following breaking news right now. An Amber Alert has been issued for these four children from Manatee County. They are believed to be with their mother. We're told the grandmother has custody, but the mother, Jay McGodwin, reportedly left with the children during a visit. Now, investigators say the children may be in danger tonight. She is said to be driving in a 2016 green Toyota Corolla with the Florida tag you see right there, BNZQ08. So if you see those children or their mother, you're asked to call 911 immediately. Former Congresswoman Corrine Brown was spotted today at FEMA headquarters applying for federal assistance. The viewer who called us about this was livid, upset that Brown, who was recently convicted of 18 felonies, would apply for help from the government. And Brown spoke exclusively to First Coast News reporter Brittany Dion today. Brittany is live tonight from the FEMA headquarters in San Marco. Brittany, uh, what does the former Congresswoman have to say about all this? Well, good evening. Former Congresswoman Corrine Brown is defending her actions tonight. I spoke to her exclusively at her home this evening. She says that she has every right to apply for FEMA assistance. Former Congresswoman Corrine Brown is once again in the spotlight, this time defending herself for seeking federal assistance from FEMA. You're saying there's nothing wrong with you getting assistance from FEMA. I don't think it's anything for it's anyone for to get the services that their tax dollars avail for them. I think everybody should take advantage <laughs> of it. I spoke to Brown as she was arriving to her home on the north side of Jacksonville late Wednesday afternoon. Brown says her riverfront home was damaged during Hurricane Irma. Serious damage. Oh, look at the side of the house. Oh, flood. Oh, yeah, the whole well, place My house flooded. flooded. I can't stay there. I haven't stayed there. No, okay. And the, the sense and everything is, is really bad. And in fact, this pole, I had no electricity until Sunday. She does have insurance. I do have flood insurance. And I have homeowners, but they all work together. But says she wants to make sure she's covered. And of course, having been on the committee, I know of all of the services that's available to the people in the community. Since the early 90s, Brown served as a congresswoman on numerous committees. Last year, she was indicted on felony charges, including fraud, tax evasion, and public corruption. Months later, Brown lost her seat in the primary election. And in May, she was convicted on 18 counts and is awaiting sentencing scheduled for November. Despite making a six-figure salary while in Congress, Brown has been very vocal about her legal expenses and financial troubles. We talked to FEMA, who says anyone can apply for assistance. Their salary is not a factor. What are your thoughts on people thinking it's wrong for you to ask for FEMA? It's no, 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 it's, it's for everybody. I don't want to be special. I want everybody to get services. And that's why you were there today? For everyone or for your... I was there for myself. Now, Brown tells me that she wants the entire community to go and apply for FEMA assistance. She wants everyone to know that the aid is here. The resource here is here and available to the community. Again, FEMA officials tell us that anyone can apply for aid. Your salary does not uh, matter and it's not a factor in applying for assistance. If you still need to apply for FEMA assistance, you can come down here to the headquarters. We're on Atlantic Boulevard. They are open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. You can also apply Apply online. We have a link on our website at firstcoastnews.com. For reporting in San Marco, I'm Brittany Dion. First Coast News on your side. Brittany, thank you. Tonight, an Orange Park family is in dire need of long term housing after their home flooded. The Vardis family has a son with special needs and they wanted to share their story in hopes other families who may be in their shoes or similar shoes get some much needed help. Honey Rodriguez is on your side with this story. These are the current living conditions for this family here in the town of Orange Park and many more families are in her same shoes. Ms. Sherry, you let us into your home. You told me that this has been an overwhelming time. Yes, it's very overwhelming. It's getting to the breaking point and uh, with my son with his special needs, he cannot live here any longer. I mean, we it's we're at our limit. My house is a mess. Colin Cohn gave us a tour of the damage in his home after Irma. His mom, Sherry Varda, says they had approximately eight inches of water inside. It's not safe for anybody that has special needs. Varda says they had to start work on the house immediately to salvage whatever they could. I've been, I've been helping her a lot. <laughs> yeah. 
Now obviously, you look around and it's not an overnight project. It's going to be months. She says the Clay County Health Department has provided a hotel for one week, but they're in dire need of long-term housing where they can also accommodate Colin, who requires a special shower and lift to get in and out of bed. When she picks me up, it's hard, it's hard on her. It's hard on me. They've been living like this for a week, but while we were there, they got a call from FEMA. We're in the system. There's going to be somebody coming out. But the process can take some time. Most of their belongings are a total loss. We're going to get through it. It's God's going to get us through me. it. It's been hard. In Orange Park, I'm Honey Rodriguez. First Coast News on your side. Honey, hopefully they can get some help. Well, new tonight, a Lakeshore Middle School teacher has been suspended for one week without pay after school leaders say students flashed their breast, kissed, and groped each other in class. According to the district, this happened during a game where students dared each other to do outrageous things. At one point, girls in the class were sitting on boys' laps and even twerking in the civics class. The students involved will be disciplined, we're told, by the school. The teacher, Brent Saudi, is suspended for not adequately providing supervision. Saudi was actually honored as the teacher of the year in 2016. And this isn't the first time Lakeshore Middle School has been in the spotlight. Just yesterday, a student was stabbed there during a fight. Now that student is expected to survive. The student with the knife was taken into custody. Tonight, a community is demanding justice in the death of two Jacksonville men. In one case, a father was killed by his neighbor, but no one has been arrested. The other case involves a police officer who shot and killed Vernell Bing, but that officer has not been charged. First Coast News Jeff Vallon is live tonight outside the courthouse where that rally was held tonight. Jeff. Well, Heather, they're calling both deaths, Vernell Bing and uh, Keegan Vaughn Roberts murders, and they say that the lack of an arrest in either of those cases shows that justice both locally and on an American a national basis remains on a sliding scale based on race. About 60 protesters in front of Duval County Courthouse Wednesday night, voicing disbelief after a Monday announcement that there will be no charges against JSO officer Tyler Landerville, who was white in the 2016 shooting death of Vernell Bing, a black man, after a high-speed car chase. In her 36-page findings, State Attorney Melissa Nelson cites the police report that Bing was speeding more than 100 miles per hour, that he accelerated before crashing into Landerville's cruiser, and that while fleeing on foot, he turned toward Landerville and motioned toward his waist. I know for a fact that JSO lies on those reports. Bing's family declined to speak with us directly on camera, but organizer Christina Kittle said she wants to create a Jacksonville Police Accountability Council, saying existing oversight committees are closed loops. So a lot of these review boards are, you know, uh, husbands or, or ex-cops or wives of cops or have some kind of relationship to Lenny Curry. There's also the case of Keegan Von Roberts, a black man shot in July by a white neighbor after what his mother says was a petty dispute about litter. It was a piece of paper, a little piece of paper that blew off the back of his car because he worked at a car wash. Uh, that evening he waited on my son to come home. As soon as they pulled up, he came with a loaded gun. Cecilia Shepard, who carries Keegan's ashes wherever she goes, says he was a peaceful young father expecting his second child. She's frustrated by the same state attorney. He's went to every neighbor on the block and said, I killed Keegan. You have a confession, you have a gun, you have a dead person, and you have a witness. What more do you need? All who spoke with us warned that without change locally, violent protests, the likes of elsewhere in recent years, are inevitable. What I'm really concerned about is what is going on in St. Louis right now and what went on in Ferguson. If we're not careful here in Jacksonville, that same type of unrest will be coming to the city, and it will be much more devastating. I did talk with Vernell Bing's mother off camera very briefly, and she hesitated to think that State Attorney Nelson will reconsider her decision. Others that I met told me that they are speculating there might be some civil lawsuit that is in the offing. Live in front of Duval County Courthouse, Jeff Dallin, First Coast News on your side. Happening right now, Puerto Rico is being hammered by powerful winds from Hurricane Maria. This video shows parts of a roof being ripped off. There are reports that the entire island is without power. 
and many people say they have been unable to contact their families. The storm made landfall as a Category 4, one of the strongest in living memory for the island. So let's get right over to First Coast storm expert Lauren Routenkrantz for the latest track. Yes, Anthony, we just got the latest 11 o'clock advisory in from the National Hurricane Center and actually nothing has really changed as far as uh, the direction of Irma right now still moving towards the northwest. But what has changed is that now that the uh, center of the storm has reemerged over the open ocean, warm waters, low areas of wind shear, which is good for the storm to increase in intense intensity once again. And that's what we're seeing. So you can see that eye beginning to wrap itself back around once again. So yes, Puerto Rico still actually getting slammed with a whole lot of rain as Maria continues to move up towards the northwest and also the eastern portions of the Dominican Republic getting pounded with rain and then still to come by late tomorrow, the Turks and Caicos 12 to 18 inches of rain expected for them and also a 15 foot storm surge possibly. So we will continue to watch Irma or excuse me, Maria pound these islands uh, in the coming days as it moves up towards the northwest. So where does the National Hurricane Center's forecast take it? Uh, again, uh, it's strengthening once again towards a major hurricane in the coming days, but staying well off of our coast. So what that means for us as we head towards the weekend. That's coming up in just a bit, Heather. That is such a powerful hurricane. Lauren, thank you. We have new information on a story First Coast News broke that has made international headlines. The Surgeon General of the Navy is taking swift action against two corpsmen inappropriately filming newborns on Snapchat. Now he is requiring training for everyone at the Naval Hospital over the next 48 hours and also banning the use of cell phones in patient care areas until further notice. But Jacksonville attorney Sean Cronin says he disagrees with the Navy Surgeon General over removing cell phones out of the patient wards. And here's why. If these sailors had not posted these videos, we would have no idea that this behavior or this conduct was allowed to take place at the hospital. Now, Cronin believes the Naval Hospital should enact nurse supervision over CNAs and also add 24 7 surveillance in some wards. More fallout tonight for the nursing home where nine residents have now died due to the sweltering heat and no AC. The facility's operating license has been suspended. State regulators decided a lack of timely medical care and trained staff to handle the situation as elderly residents uh, languished in the heat. A criminal investigation is underway to find out what went wrong and who should take responsibility for the delay in calling for help. Well, it's not something you hear about too often, a four-year-old bitten by a shark. And in just two minutes, hear who the mom is blaming for this attack. And it's not Irish coffee, but it may be the next best thing. The new flavor at Starbucks that has some people excited tonight. Hmm, I'm curious to see that one. Well, we're watching Hurricane Maria move up towards the northwest, but as we head into this weekend, we'll be feeling some of its indirect impacts. I'll explain after the break. An incredible story out of Stewart, Florida. A four-year-old girl survived after she was bitten by a six-foot shark. And tonight, her mom's demanding answers about exactly what provoked the attack that happened on this beach. Jessica Beach says little Violet was playing in the water a few feet away from her when she heard her daughter scream and then saw all this blood in the water. When she lifted Violet up, a chunk of the little girl's leg was missing above the knee. Mm. Jessica thinks that someone was spear fishing near the beach and that agitated the shark. I think somebody should be responsible for what happened to my daughter. That was a provoked attack that was not unprovoked. Now, the four-year-old had to undergo surgery. She ended up getting more than 100 stitches. The good news is, since the day she was attacked, she really has defied doctor's expectations. And for now, she's getting around with the help of a wheelchair and a walker, but she doesn't seem to mind. Well, if you're wondering why there are still a lot of empty store shelves at grocery stores in our area, you're not alone. First Coast News is on your side tonight, and we went searching for some answers. We spoke to a Walmart representative who says there always is a surge of customers before and after a storm when everyone returns home. Also, eight distribution centers closed during Irma, meaning no new merchandise could get to the stores. One shopper says she spent hours today trying to find everything she needed. We was walking around in the store. It took us a while because we tried to find things to substitute for what we was looking for. And I can't think what I was looking for at that moment, but um, it took us like a couple of hours to walk around in the store to really find something for us. 
Store representatives tells us that they're still working around the clock to get all Jacksonville stores and stores in our area back up to normal status. Yeah, I saw a lot of empty shelves at the store today. Well, Aldi is looking to hire 500 people statewide, and some of the positions pay quite well. Every Aldi store here in Florida, including the five locations on our first coast, will be holding a hiring event tomorrow from 7 a.m. until 5 p.m. The grocery store chain is hiring both entry level as well as management positions with rate wages ranging from 1150 an hour to $24 an hour. You have to be at least 18 years old to apply. Well, many people are caught up in the pumpkin spice craze right now, but what about whiskey flavored coffee? Well, Starbucks is trying out that idea. It sounds quite interesting, mm -hmm. but if you're looking for a buzz, you're out of luck because the drink doesn't actually have any alcohol in it. It's made by placing unroasted Indonesian coffee beans in empty barrels that once had aged whiskey inside. So the beans soak in the flavor that way. The drink is available in select Starbucks uh, across the country. All right, Lauren joins us now and just those images of Maria and how big that hurricane is. Yes, and you know what? I was thinking tonight watching, you know, my Twitter feed and Facebook, mm -hmm. just seeing these images, it's kind of eerily uncommon, or excuse me, common uh, that we've seen, you know, this season. It just seems like one oh, after one another. After the, and we have so many people here on the first coast yeah. who have family yes. in Puerto Rico. I know very concerned about yes. that tonight. So they are still getting a lot of rain right now, but um, we will eventually see those conditions improve for the folks in Puerto Rico. So as they wake up tomorrow morning, possibly able to hopefully get out and about to see what the island looks like or just their uh, check on their neighbors and their family and friends. Now the Eastern Dominican Republic, we're continuing to watch uh, some heavy rain, wind and rain for those folks, but then we will uh, have all eyes on the Turks and Caicos and then also the southeastern Bahamas. Right now, Maria is a category two hurricane, but with the warm waters and low wind shear, we will likely see it increase back to category three status. Now, the track really hasn't changed all that much. The models are in fair agreement that it is going to take that north westerly track and then more northerly and then eventually more northeasterly. Now, the latest Hurricane Center advisory does show it kind of staying a bit more organized uh, as far as category three to category two up in the uh, coming days as far as the weekend goes, but that's not going to have a whole lot as far as our impacts go. Um, things are still going to really be the same. Actually, we're going to be on the dry and sunny side of Maria, but if you're going to be at the beaches Saturday and Sunday, just watch out for rip currents. The swells will also be building. We'll have some dangerous seas likely offshore and then have a persistent breeze coming off of the Atlantic. So um, as far as our impacts go, of course, we'll take that any day over what the folks in Puerto Rico are dealing with. So future cast for tonight back here at home. A few showers that we saw out west and they'll likely wake up to some patches of fog by the early morning hours, but otherwise the commute is looking good for your Thursday and also your lunch break is looking good as well. Lots of sunshine and temperatures getting to near 90 degrees, but along the beaches will be sticking in the 80s thanks to that breeze coming out of the east. A few showers possible to pop up, but I think the best chance is west of Highway 301 and out towards that I-75 corridor. Now looking ahead to our hashtag team sideline Friday night football. We will have some good weather for that as well. And of course, on firstcoastnews.com, you can find all of our games. I know Chris Porter would love me to give a shout out and vote for where you want uh, the game to be. Of course, our First Coast News team uh, on Friday night. Temperature wise, we're going to be near 80 degrees, 82 out uh, towards Waycross. Uh, Ed White, about 81 degrees out on the west side. And as far as the rain chances go, they'll be slim. Could have a couple of showers, but especially as we head towards uh, sunset, Things will be quieting down by your Friday. Now, Saturday brings a little bit better of a chance for the showers inland. So if you plan to be at the beaches, remember, watch out for the rip currents and the swells. But by Sunday, as Irma is passing several hundred hundred miles, Maria is passing several hundred miles offshore. Uh, looks like things are going to be good, especially for our Jacksonville Armada. And as we head into the first full week of fall, things will be good as well. Chris Porter. Hey, the votes have been tallied, so find out where the First Coast Sports Team is heading this Friday night for our sideline 2017 Game of the Week. But first, Jaguars and Ravens at historic Wembley Stadium Sunday, with the Jags think could be the deciding factor in winning the game. Folks, we're pumping up the volume next in sports.
And here are your winning Powerball numbers tonight. 68, 48, 67, 39, 53, and the Powerball is 26. The jackpot tonight, $40 million. From the Farrah and Farrah Sports Desk, it's First Coast Sports. Hello, everybody. The Jaguars are scheduled to board a plane tomorrow morning to make the trip across the pond for their annual home game in London. The Jaguars want to make it three straight wins over there, but they'll have to knock off the unbeaten Baltimore Ravens. The Jaguars offense is matching up with a defense that has forced 10 turnovers in the first two games of this season, including eight interceptions. Meanwhile, the Ravens offensive line is banged up. Advantage Jaguars. However, this could come down to which team gets the most rest. Given the fact that we've been there, um, uh, we're a little more familiar with um, how things work out there. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, I think the team that's the most rested uh, is the team that's going to have the advantage. I think there are some guys here that have, you know, gone over there for years and played there and, you know, are comfortable being in that locker room and playing there and doing all that. I think there is a little bit to that. Two guys you can bet are excited for this trip to London are Alan Hearns and Telvin Smith. Hearns has come up with some big catches and played some of his best ball at historic Wembley Stadium. So too has Jaguars linebacker Telvin Smith. Both players are eager to help the big cats get that victory to get over that 500 mark. Um, you know, as far as me, you know, I always have positive vibes. Every time I step out there on that field, you know, so, you know, it, it, it doesn't mean anything different to me, you know, going over to London. Uh, I just treat it as if uh, another opportunity to showcase what I'm capable of. When the crowd come out, it's always a solid game. Um, and then, you know, the time that we get to interact with the fans and stuff over there has always been good. And while this is the fifth straight season, the Jaguars are playing a home game in London. It will be the first time for Jaguars rookie defensive end Dewan Smoot. Smoot says this, in fact, will be his first trip out of the country. Some of the things Smoot says he's looking forward to doing most once he arrives in London. He wants to sightsee, visit some historic landmarks, and... I just really just want to go shopping. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. I mean, I feel like... That's like... Isn't that like one of the fashion capitals, you know? Yeah. So I feel like I just want to go out there and shop a little bit. The biggest thing is don't um, don't don't go too crazy. You know what I mean? Cause it cause cause it, it looked like you can grab a lot of stuff, but then it get a little serious when it's gonna time to rain out. <laughs> The votes have been tallied in the sideline. 2017 game of the week is taking us to the west side of Jacksonville as the Ed White Commanders will host the Fletcher Senators. Our live coverage kicks off Friday night starting at 5 and will continue throughout the evening. Then you can catch all of the hard-hitting action Friday at 11.15 on sideline 2017. First from you, now to a highlight of a middle schooler who will be making big plays on the high school gridiron real, real soon. That's King Benford about to come into your living room, toting the rock to the house, make reservations for six. King helped the Gamble Rogers Stingray uh, remain perfect as they knocked off Murray 36. Thanks, Jay, for emailing this video to us. With Hurricane Irma forcing Florida State schedule to uh, shifting it around. Guess what, folks?